Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to talk about video production in Reaper. This will just be a quick overview of everything. I have a big playlist of specific techniques and things you can do with Reaper in terms of video production already on the blog so you can go through those videos. This is kind of a recap. Some things have changed, especially since the very first video that I did on this topic. So let's get started. First thing you need to know is that Reaper can use external encoders and decoders. The main one that you'll be using is VLC, and you can get that here, videoland.org. This button here should get you the version that you need, but just in case you want a different version, there's a little drop down, and you can choose Windows 64 bit or the Mac OS versions. You want the 64 bit version if you're using Reaper 64 bit. The other one is FFmpeg, and that is useful for exporting, especially on Windows, different formats. Reaper doesn't have H.264 encoding by default on Windows, so you will need this. And you want to make sure that you're using you know, the latest version of uh, version 4, the 64-bit version, and the shared. And you download that, you put the contents of that inside of Reaper's user plugins folder. Now if we look up preferences and video, you want to make sure that your video decoder priority is set. So I have VLC as the first priority. And if we're not sure what we have installed or what's available, we can click this show available decoder information. And um, for example, here it's showing that VLC three is enabled and some other information, um, FFmpeg settings and things like that. If you don't know where the video window is in Reaper, you can go to the view menu and it's here video window. To get videos into Reaper, we can go through the insert menu, insert media file, and select from um, you know, your, your video library. I recommend getting your project organized in advance of starting the Reaper project. So you get all of your B-roll, your A camera, external audio, any music that you're going to be using, and you put that all in one folder. So when you make the project, you can just use that as your audio or your media folder, and Reaper doesn't start copying things. So the second way we can import video is just through Finder. So I can take this and just drop that in. And then the third way we can import video is through the Media Explorer. And what's great about the Media Explorer is we can preview things like this. So that's playing now through the Media Explorer. And we can also grab a section of a video and drop that in on the same track or on a new track. So that imported just that selected area. Uh, and when we're done here with this, we can click stop and that will, um, that will disable the preview inside of the Media Explorer. So I'm actually going to import two video clips, or actually an audio clip and a video clip. Uh, that go together so I can show you how to sync the audio. Uh, but first I want to show you the source properties window. I'm going to close the dock and I'm going to grab this video clip. I'm going to right click, go to source properties. And this shows you information about this video clip. Um, you can use this on any type of media item. Um, but I find it most useful for video items because there are some additional options here. Um, so what we're looking for here is the video frame size, which is 1920 by 1080 and 29.97 FPS. And we can use these numbers to set up the project settings so that our grid size is set correctly. And if we're using nudging, uh, that will follow the correct frame size. It's very important to edit your videos on the frame grid. Um, otherwise, you're likely to get dropouts where the, you'll have a a black frame, things like that. You can edit it very much like audio, um, but it does need to be on the frame grid. Just from my personal experience, I find that if you turn off the audio within the video clips, you get much better performance. I'm going to leave it on for now um, because we're in, we'll need that when we're syncing the audio, but we'll definitely want to turn that off at some point. Up next, we want to set up our grid and our ruler. So I'm going to the grid settings and right clicking. And for grid lines, I want to set this to frame. So that's going to make a grid line on every frame 
and our video, as long as its edge is snapped to the grid, that's going to reduce any glitches or dropouts and things like that as we're editing. We just want to make sure that we have snapped a grid on and when we're editing, it's on one of these lines. And next we want to set up our ruler. So we right click in the ruler and we set this to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So when we're in a 30 frames per second grid, this time is only going to go up to um, 30 frames and then it goes to the next. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing when these grid divisions don't match up with your frame size. So how do we set this frame size? We go to the file menu and go to project settings. In here on the third tab, it's video. You can set this to 30 frames per second, 60, or in this case, we want 29.97 non-drop. For preferred video size, you want to set this to the same size as the majority of the clips in your project. In most cases, it's going to be 1920 by 1080, or maybe 720p, or maybe higher. It really depends on the, your source footage and the files that you're working with. Video item visibility, items in lowered tracks replace higher. And that means that if there's a video on track one, you're going to see that um, whenever there's content there over anything that's on tracks two or three, like Photoshop layers or any video or image editor, usually the top layer is what you see. And then other layers are visible only when you're using opacity changes or blend modes and things like that. But you could also reverse that if that's something you prefer. So personal preference. If you're using a mix of different video frame sizes, like you have some 1080p clips, you have some stuff that's smaller, you're importing images or pointer arrows and things like that, you might want to have this option turned off, this first one here. Always resize video sources to preferred video size. If you have that off, it's going to keep the items at their real size, and then you can use the video processor to scale them up, down, if that's on, it's going to stretch them to fill the frame by default. So this video here is something from one of my Q&A videos, and this is a dual system audio recording. I've got audio on the camera, as well as a field recorder with a shotgun mic, um, and that signal is going to replace all the audio that you hear. Um, let's just get these closer in time like that. Now they're just kind of lined up by eye. But if we go right to this uh, peak in the video file, you can see that my hand clap has not, my hands have not met in that hand clap. And so if I put the audio there, it's going to be totally out of sync. Um, it might sound fine for the first 30 seconds, but 10 minutes later on in this clip is going to be drastically out of time. So we want to make sure that we advance frame by frame until we find where the hands meet where the sound is produced from this hand clap. So right there is where I would do it. And I would want to get this hand clap from the shotgun mic uh, synced up to that point. So what we can do is just put in a marker in the, the timeline to just mark that point. And we can drag this over like that. That would be fine. Um, and then at that point, we want to group these items. Um, but first, I'm going to go to Source Properties, Ignore Audio. Audio from this video file is not going to be read. Uh, we get a little bit of a performance boost. We can select these two items, right click, group items. So now if I click anywhere in these items, both of these items are going to be selected. If I make splits in the item like this, um, it makes a new group. And so these two clips are together. This part I don't need. The actual intro to this video is probably right here. I can just remove that and snap this to the beginning of the video. Next, we're going to quickly look at the video processor plugin and the ways you can use it. Any video effect is going to be going through this video processor plugin. You can find that when you open up the effects browser. Uh, if you just click on all plugins, it should be right there at the top, video processor. And it comes up with this you know, kind of ugly looking code window. Start with going through the presets. These ones up here, the top of the list are the ones that are included with Reaper. And you can do some basic things with it. For example, we can take the cheap brightness contrast one, and we can just do some really basic uh, image adjustments to this. So I can make it a little bit brighter, add a little more contrast, and maybe reduce the saturation a little bit. 
and so something like that. Some of these presets get pretty weird. We can change the saturation to less than zero, and it starts adding in strange colors. Another example of an effect you can put on the item is the invert color, or we can use the pixelate function. If the effect is on the item, it's only going to apply to that section of the video as it plays over it. So here I've got the, the pixelate function, and here on this item, uh, there's no effects chain there, and there's no pixelate function. You can also add effects to a track, like this, video processor, and I'll just grab another effect like, I don't know, stage lighting. So this is processed in real time. So over time, it's going to do these different lighting effects. And anywhere in the track, even when there's no video, we're still seeing this lighting effect happen. Um, so when effects are on the track, it's going to affect everything. And you have to be careful that sometimes effects on different tracks, even though the effect is on track two and there's no video there, we're still seeing the effect on uh, track three where the actual video file is. So not all presets work like that. It's kind of up to the code, whether it affects all sources below it or just the current source. If you want to add a text layer to your video, you'll probably want to do this in a different way. So rather than putting the effect right on the video item or onto the track, you're going to be doing this on its own item. And for that, I like to use an empty MIDI item. So, um, so let's just take a section like this, go to Insert, New MIDI Item. There's also a shortcut for that. And if you have no items selected, you can usually you can hold Control on the PC or Command on the Mac, and you can just drag and create a, um, a MIDI item. I'm just going to color this track so we can see those. There we go. So this is what we'll use as a effects chain, um, or just really just a place where we can put in an effects chain um, for the video processor. So the video processor lives on this item here, and it is above our video track. And in here, we can use the preset title text overlay. and here you see this little gray box that says this is a title. And in here we can change this to anything. So we put in a new, a new text there and we hit Command S to save. And now we see that. Uh, we can change the height, can change the position, can change both the Y and the X position, can add in a border, and we can also remove the background. Yeah, so it's a really basic title. If you want more advanced stuff, I have some presets that I've shared with my viewers. So this is a different font, different starting point. I like the centered text because when you don't have any video there, it's just a nice clean title. But it also works fairly well over top of something. So I can drop this down to uh, below the video right there. I can change the font, so I can change this to, so now it's using Helvetica. I can change the colors using RGB values from 0 to 1. We can add in a background like this and change the color of the background and get a few more options there. Any of these parameters here that are defined in the code, um, this section of the video processor code, any of these can be automated. So because this is a item effect, we would touch one of these controls, go to param menu, show the last touched media item take envelope. So now we can change the size of this text over time. No, it looks like that. As I said at the beginning of this video, I have a playlist of other videos where I've gone through and uh, dissected video projects or showed you how to do uh, text overlays, uh, borders, lots of things with the video processor. You can use video in Reaper for a lot of different things. Personally, I've made um, tutorial videos, I've done vlogs and podcasts and 
uh, advertisements and memes, um, all kinds of stuff inside of Reaper. And if you need any help with anything, just please let me know. That's where I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.